Hello everyone, my name is Martin Linksfeld and I am Master Chef at FoggyKitchen.com. In this video I would like to explain how we could enable AutoScaler inside OCI Container Engine for Kubernetes, also known as OKE. I will use my publicly available GitHub repository covering Terraform automation for this exercise. Therefore, all elements will be deployed with Oracle Resource Manager. Then, I will deploy dozens of Nginx pods and replicas. We can expect Kubernetes to adopt to the growing load and increase the number of OK worker nodes. Let's now move to the topology diagram of this lesson. Here is topology diagram of this lesson. As you can see, we have a one region deployment where we have one VCN and inside this VCN we have three subnets. First subnet is uh, private uh, and it has inside worker nodes of our Kubernetes engine cluster. Next we have API endpoint where our APIs of Kubernetes will be exposed to the public internet. And we have also another subnet, which is covering um, load balancer. Through uh, this subnet, we will expose Kubernetes services uh, into uh, our public internet. Returning back for a moment to our uh, node subnet, as you, you can see here, uh, we have a um, uh, possibility to deploy pods inside our Kubernetes, right? So we can deploy one or two or, or, or even more pods. And of course, all of the uh, workload will be uh, executed, will be deployed on worker nodes. But let's assume the number of uh, pods will grow significantly. What will happen next? Without Autoscaler, uh, you know, the whole configuration will not change. But with Autoscaler, we can expect that, you know, more worker nodes will be added uh, when more pods replicas will be deployed. At some moment in time, we can expect that the cluster will automatically trigger the start of yet another VM, which will be working as a worker node. And that is exactly the sense of this lesson after our Terraform deployment. Let's move to the code. Okay, uh, now we are in um, my local copy of the GitHub repository. Let me first go to network.tf. So as you can see, we are creating VCN, then we are creating NAT gateway for private subnets, internet uh, gateway for public subnets, we have also service gateway for uh, native services inside the uh, OCI. Uh, of course, we have also two route tables, one for private uh, uh, for private uh, subnets, and we are going through uh, the NAT gateway um, and through the services if it's necessary. Um, also, we have a public route table, which is going through the internet gateway. Uh, finally, we have some uh, security lists defined by uh, OKI documentation. Uh, I will not hover here too much, so let me scroll down. We have also um, uh, another security list just for API endpoint uh, subnet. Uh, and finally, here we have also network security group which is also according to the documentation and last but not least subnets right api uh, subnet um, api endpoint subnet okey node subnet which is uh, private uh, and uh, finally lb subnet as well and that is network.tf now let's move to okey.tf file. In this file, we will create uh, two resources. One resource will be for okey cluster. And uh, according to documentation, we will nest that cluster in a VCN. We will associate endpoint config with our API endpoint subnet and network security group. 
uh, for load balancer, we'll all, we will also associate the proper subnet. And then we have another resource just uh, for a pool of node, right? So here we are uh, associating uh, this node pool with the cluster which was created before. And what is important, we are defining here uh, node config details, which means it will associate uh, each and every node of Kubernetes uh, worker nodes with Oki nodes subnet, right? And that is all, but I would like to highlight something very important. Uh, probably you have noticed that I have this define tag section here and here and here. And what is the purpose of this tagging? Because it looks a little bit cryptic. We are using tag namespace and uh, cluster tag set to true. And what is the purpose of that? Here we need to jump into Oki uh, autoscaler.tf file, which is here. So let's analyze first 21 uh, lines of our Oki autoscaler.tf file. As you can see here, we are creating first tag namespace, which is essentially sort of a grouping mechanism umbrella for tagging. Uh, so then we can create a tag, right? And this tag is defined by this description, right? Tag to identify worker nodes in the Oki cluster. So each and every node in this cluster will be identified, could be identified, by this tagging. Okay, but can you can ask questions. What is the purpose of this? How it is so cryptic? What, how we will do that? So the answer is simple. Let's go directly to okipolicy.tf. In this particular place, we will create a few elements. First of all, we will create dynamic group. And this dynamic group uh, has a matching rule uh, which defines the conditions, right? Uh, for, uh, you know, for elements of OCI, um, you know, uh, services and so resources, which will be included in this dynamic group. And what is the matching rule? All resources which is uh, named, uh, I mean, the resources uh, with the type instance where a compartment of these resources is our compartment, right? And then this resource has tag, right? Called autoscaler set with, with the value set to true, right? So it means essentially each and every worker node of our cluster will be included in dynamic group uh, defined here. Then we have a policy and what this policy defines. First of all, we have two policies. One of the poli first policy will define, uh, you know, uh, the privileges. I am, you know, uh, privileges for uh, autoscaler instances. So what is what is defined here? First of all, our dynamic group, so the members of this dynamic group will be able to manage uh, cluster node pools in particular compartment. We, uh, this dynamic group will be able to uh, manage instance family, uh, subnet, Vinix um, can be used and we will be able to inspect compartments. And we have also another policy, yet another policy. And again, the same dynamic group will be able to uh, operate, uh, you know, uh, um, with with subnets, right? I mean, members of, 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 of this cluster will be able to uh, use subnets, will be able to read virtual network families, use Vinix, and so on and so on. So I'm trying to tell you this configuration will uh, follow instance principle, uh, uh, you know, approach and each and every instance in our Oki cluster will have additional privileges necessary for autoscaler. Okay, 
that is uh, all in, in case of the OK policy. So let's return back to Autoscaler and start uh, to analyze further lines, starting with 23. In lines uh, 23 up to 26 of autoscalar.tf file, we have a resource called local file. And it means this local file will be created uh, and the name of the destination file will be called autoscalar.yaml file. And uh, we will use template file uh, and some variables will be replaced on the fly. If we want to understand what is this template file, immediately we need to jump into data sources, right? So let's go to data sources.tf file. And at the very end of this file, we'll find the data source uh, template file where we will use template file in our templates here, subdirectory, autoscalar.template.yaml, right? And we will inject the values of these variables directly into this template. It's a little bit like in Jinja 2 uh, with Python. So, uh, what exactly we will inject? Uh, first of all, uh, we will inject the image and we need to make a lookup for our uh, local autoscalar image um, and we will look for a particular version of the Kubernetes. We also need to provide minimum and maximum nodes for autoscalar and we need to also provide OCID of our Kubernetes node pool, right? Okay, so what exactly do we have here? So this autoscalar.template.yaml file is a, essentially a Kubernetes deployment file, right? We have a lot of elements here, but if we scroll down to the very end, so for autoscalar, we have a command which should be executed called cluster autoscalar and we are injecting information about nodes, minimum nodes, maximum nodes, and the pool where all of that should happen. So this file will be immediately deployed by our automation with, you know, those variables changed to proper values. And where it will be done, the answer is simple. It will be done in autoscalar.tf here with this null resource which is executing local exec uh, commands. First of all we need to set up uh, our uh, uh, cluster for kubectl and then we can uh, you know apply this uh, we can uh, de deploy right this autoscalar.yaml file with kubectl apply command. After uh, two minutes, we can verify uh, the status of our autoscaler cluster. And this kubectl command will do that for us. It's a little bit complicated, but I believe during the <clears throat> deployment um, in a real uh, uh, environment, in our tenancy, you will understand that more precisely. And that is all uh, in case of the code review. Um, let's now move to uh, our GitHub repository and deploy the stuff with Resource Manager. Okay, this is my repository in uh, GitHub, which is public. And uh, I can scroll down and click on Deploy to Cloud button because I am already pre-authenticated. I have already logged into the console recently. I can uh, accept terms and conditions. And now I can choose the compartment to uh, deploy my stuff. Let's decide it will be here. And I will click next. And uh, now I can choose the availability domain. I can choose how many nodes I would like to have. So that's it. 
uh, let me choose the latest Kubernetes version for me at the moment. I will use E for flex shapes. Uh, here is a definition how many gigs of memory we will have. And uh, this is a configuration of uh, auto scalar, right? So let's say minimum for the nodes will be three and maximum will be 10. I don't want to, you know, grow this cluster to enormous size. And okay, now I can click next and I can run a resource manager job to apply the configuration, to deploy everything according to my expectation. So I will pause the recording at the moment because we need to wait a few minutes to finish. Looks like our job is done. So there is a suggestion to start uh, Cloud Shell and I will do that. So let me wait for Cloud Shell to be executed, to be created for us. And uh, I will copy this configuration just to equip local kubectl copy in Cloud Shell with current configuration. Super. And now I can verify the status of the cluster. Let me enlarge it a little bit and uh, let me run this command. So as you can see, Auto Scholar cluster is healthy, right? Uh, three nodes in uh, currently. Uh, why three nodes? Because uh, let me go directly from here to our container. Um, I will go directly to um, the compartment. So here is a cluster and uh, node pools. And inside this node pool, we have three nodes, right? Uh, we can see them as well from the compute instances perspective. So here, super. So everything is fine. So what can we do next, right? So let me do it a little bit bigger. I, we have a documentation here, so let, let's run kubectl to get the, the nodes, right? So I will run kubectl to get nodes. So far only three, as I have shown you from the console perspective. Here is a mm, uh, nginx uh, deployment uh, file, nginx yaml, so let me uh, create that. I will copy that here. I will save it. And now I will run, I will deploy sample application, sample nginx. Okay. Deployment created. And uh, let me now scale this deployment to 100 replicas. So let's populate worker nodes with the workload. So as you can see, the operation has scaled and uh, we can watch the progress by typing this command, right? 20, 37, 40, right? So at some point in time, uh, Autoscaler will discover that the number of replicas is too big to cope with the already existing worker node base, and it will trigger uh, it will trigger the scale out uh, operation, right? So after a few minutes, the you will see increased total number of worker nodes, and we will check it up. Uh, you know, with kubectl get nodes command. Also, we'll see that from the console perspective. So let me pause for a moment and wait for uh, this operation to happen. Okay, looks like we have 100 replicas. So let me break this and I will run get nodes command. So now we have four nodes instead of three, right? 
four nodes, perfect. Let's verify that from here. Yeah, four nodes here in instances. And let's go directly to Oki. And uh, inside Oki, in node pools, we should have four nodes, right? And uh, in metrics, as you can see, uh, you know, there is a growing uh, workload and it has triggered, as I have said, the creation of additional worker node in this configuration. I think this concludes our uh, lesson and now I can run uh, I can run Terraform destroy operation. So let me go here and I will run destroy command and that will be the end of this lesson. Thank you. I hope it was interesting for you and see you soon.